John and Jean Wilsey welcomed their second son, David James Wilsey, on March 23, 1968. Throughout their childhood, Jeff, Dave, and Chris were inseparable. Hockey in the winter, baseball in the summer, uh, we were never inside, never in the house. It was almost like a punishment to be inside. It was a great childhood, it really was. He was his own man, I'll tell you that. He had lots of spirit, lots of spunk, lots of people around him, a hundred friends, and... Uh, none, of, none of the rules were ever made to apply for Dave. No. It just wasn't his thing. <laughs> You definitely knew when Dave was in the room. You wouldn't be like an hour later go, oh, Dave's here. Like you knew the second he was there. Okay, now the party can start. On April 30th, 1995, at the age of 27, Dave's life was about to change forever. I was uh, going down really fast down the ice and uh, got the puck, shot it over the net. And so I jumped over to fenceman and when I went to cut in behind the net, I lost my footing and I went head first in the boards. I went down, I'm laying on the ice, and I can see the puck. It's not that far away, and I'm trying to get up and I'm trying to move. Nothing was moving. When I'm leaving the ice, I went, all my buddies are there, right? And I went to give them the thumbs up and my thumb didn't work. Three days later, Dave received his diagnosis. I could tell for him, when it was hard for him to tell me the news uh, that I was gonna have paralysis for life. And uh, I'm, <laughs> I guess I'm kind of a smart ass, but uh, uh, when he, without missing a beat, I looked up and I said, will this mean I'll never play the violin again? And uh, he's like, no, I'm, I'm sorry, you won't. And my mom's at the foot of the bed and she hits the bed and she's like, David, because I never played the violin. You had to appreciate Dave's sense of humor and he had it right from the Day one. 20 minutes after he was hurt. I well, he always had a sense of humor, but he, it really helped everybody cope and com anybody that came into his room. He was the one with the joke. You didn't need to feel uncomfortable there. He would make you feel comfortable, and that's the way he's been forever. Dave was working hard at rehab, regaining his strength and relearning the one simple skills that he had previously taken for granted. Three months following his accident, two players from the London Annihilators came to visit Dave in the hospital. He grabs my hand, he starts, he's like, oh yeah, his, his hands are like this, and I'm like, what, what is he doing? He's like, oh, he's figuring out what class should be for wheelchair rugby. I go, wheelchair rugby, I go, what's that? And they kind of told me, and I was like, eh, I don't know. Thankfully for Dave, his new friends didn't give up easily. I'll never forget this. I, uh, I wheeled into the, into the gym and this guy just came flying by and he just smoked the guy. And grabbed the ball and as he's flying out of his chair, he yells, time out. And people cheered and I signed up that day. I mean, I was hooked. 